in this lesson, we want to review factoring trinomials using reverse FOIL. So for the last two lessons, we've been talking about factoring trinomials into the product of two binomials. There's a lot of different methods out there to do this. This is one of those things that's pretty tedious. But over the years, it's gotten a lot better with the use of computers. It used to be that you would punch this in on your TI-83 or TI-89 or whatever graphing calculator you had, and that would factor it for you if you didn't feel like factoring it. Now you can type this into a variety of online calculators, and it calculates it for you in a second, okay? But you still need to understand the process that you can use to do this because you might be asked to do this on a test for whatever reason, and you might not be allowed to use a calculator to do it. So if we look at kind of the harder scenario where we have ax squared plus bx plus c and a is not equal to one. So in other words, this leading coefficient, the coefficient for x squared is not one. If we look at an example where it's kind of easier, where a is one, let's say we had x squared minus two x minus three. We can factor this so quickly because we know this guy, because it's a one here, 1x squared is only going to be x times x here. This is the first or the f in FOIL, okay? So all I really need to work out is this here and this here. That's really easy. All I have to do is get two integers that give me a product of negative 3 and a sum of negative 2. So for negative 3, it's either positive 1 and negative 3 or negative 1 and positive 3. Well, in this case, because I want a negative sum, I want a negative 3 and a positive 1. Right, my outer would be negative 3x, my inner would be plus x. That would give me a sum of negative 2x. And of course, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So again, that's the easier scenario. And when we get to the more challenging scenario where a is not equal to 1, something like this guy, 7x squared minus 64x plus 9, we learned in the last lesson that we could factor this using something known as the AC method, or a lot of people might call it using a grouping method, right? Normally we use factoring by grouping with a four term polynomial. So with this method, essentially we gather some information and we rewrite the polynomial in such a way that it's a four term polynomial and we can use grouping. So really quickly, let's just review that real fast and then we'll jump into the reverse FOIL. So to do this AC method, we wanna find two integers that have a product of A times C and a sum of B. So in case you don't know, we label this guy right here the coefficient of the squared variable is a. We label this guy right here the coefficient of the first degree variable as a b. And then we label this guy right here the constant as a c. So what is a times c? It's 7 times 9, that's 63. So that's what we want for a product. And then b is going to be negative 64. So this one's really easy to figure out. If you want a sum of negative 64 and a product of positive 63, your two integers would be negative 63 and negative one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna write those two integers real quick. So you have negative 63 and negative one. You use these two integers to rewrite this middle term. So you would have seven X squared minus 63 X minus X plus nine. Haven't done anything illegal. I just rewrote the middle term negative 64 X as negative 63 X minus X. All I did was expand it, okay? So now that it's a four term polynomial, we can use grouping, right? So from the first group, the first two terms, I can pull out a 7x, and I would have x minus 9. From this group, I'm going to pull out a negative 1, and I would have x minus 9. So you can see you have a common binomial factor here of x minus 9, and you go ahead and pull that out. You would have x minus 9, and then multiplied by, you'd have 7x, and then minus 1. So kind of a fast method in a lot of cases depending on how many different factors you need to go through. So some of these things, when you're factoring, you get it right away. All the things you're there for 10 minutes trying to go through all these different possibilities, and it's just very, very tedious. So it's just a luck of the draw, right? So this method is preferred by most students because with the trial and error method, it tends to get pretty tedious depending on what you get. So let's erase this. And let's go through and talk about factoring with reverse FOIL or again, trial and error, as some people will say. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write my parentheses here. And I'm going to think about what's going to go here and here. Now, in this case, we're lucky because we have a prime number as the leading coefficient. So this is the easiest case when you're doing reverse FOIL because 
I know that 7 can only come from 7 times 1. I know that x squared can only come from x times x. So I can go ahead and just put a 7x in an x, okay? If I had a 3x squared, I could put a 3x in an x. If I had a 5x squared, I could put a 5x in an x, right? So on and so forth. But if I had something that was not prime, like a 10, well, then I could have 10 and 1, or I could have 2 and 5, right? So it becomes more problematic because you've got more things to check. Now, I still need to work out this and this. So how would I do that? Well, I'm going to look at this last term here, and I'm going to say, okay, what are the factors of 9? Because it's got to be that this guy right here multiplied by this guy right here gives me a product of 9, and it's got to be plus 9. Now, this guy is negative, which tells me that I need a negative here and a negative there. So factors of 9, forget about the signs. You've got 1 and 9 and 3 and 3. It's the only possibilities. So now you would go through and work out the outer and inner, right, those steps in FOIL, and see which one or which combination more specifically gives you the correct middle term of negative 64x. So in other words, this would be your outer and this would be your inner. So 7x times something plus x times something should be equal to negative 64x. So you can try 1 and 9, and remember, we're going to want negatives here. So I'm going to put a negative 1 and a negative 9. Let's check that. So 7x times negative 1 is negative 7x, and then x times negative 9 is going to be negative 9x. If I sum those two together, I would get a negative 16x, and that is not negative 64x, so that doesn't work. Now, I need to flip these around. I need to try negative 9 and also negative 1. 7x times negative 9 is going to be negative 63x. x times negative 1 is going to be negative x. Now, if we sum these two together, we do get negative 64x. So this is the correct combination. But remember, 7x is multiplying negative 9. So 7x is multiplying negative 9. So it's got to be x minus 9 like that. And x is multiplying negative 1, so x is going to be multiplying this. So this is going to be a negative 1 there. Okay? You can always check your result with FOIL. So we can go back and say, okay, we know 7x times x is 7x squared. The outer here would be negative 63x. The inner here would be minus x, so that would combine and give me a negative 64x. So we're good to go there. And then negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 3x squared plus 29x plus 56. So another case where we have a prime number as the leading coefficient. So 3x squared can only come from 3x times x. So I'm going to go ahead and start this off by putting a 3x and an x. And now I just need to work out this guy and this guy. And remember, this times this has to give me this. So I just think about the factors of 56. And this is positive and this is positive, so I know these are each going to be plus. Okay, so for 56, I've got 1 and 56, I've got 2 and 28, I've got 4 and 14, and I've got 7 and 8, okay? So this is where it gets pretty tedious because you've got to go through all these combinations and say, okay, if I put a 56 here and a 1 here, does that work? Well, I've got to check the outer and the inner. So 3 times 56 is 168, so no way that's too big. If you put 56 over here, it would still be too big. So 1 and 56 will not work. You can get rid of that. Next, you've got 2 and 28. So if I put a 2 here and a 28 here, 3 times 28 would be too big. If I flip that around and put a 28 here and a 2 here, even though 28 times x is only 28x, the 3x times 2 would be 6x. And if you add those two together, it's larger than 29x. So we can get rid of that guy. So now we've got 4 and 14. So if I put a 4 here and a 14 here, that's going to be too big, right? 3 times 14 is 42, too big, right? You'd have 42x plus 4x, which is 46x, not going to work. If I flipped it around and I put 14 here and 4 here, you would have 12x plus 14x, right? The outer would be 12x, the inner would be 14x, but that's too small, right? 12 plus 14 is 26. So that would be 26x, you need 29x, so that doesn't work. So now we're down to our last possibility, which is 7 and 8. So if no combination works with 7 and 8, you can go ahead and say this guy is prime. So I'll start with a 7 here and an 8 here. 
So the outer would be 24x and the inner would be 7x, so that's too big. So now let's flip it around and put a 7 here and an 8 here, and that's just right, right? So 3x times 7 would be 21x. The inner 8 times x would be plus 8x. 21x plus 8x is 29x, so that's what we're looking for, okay? So you can see how tedious that was. We had to go through every single possibility until we finally got the one that worked. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So we have 40x squared plus 92x plus 48. And the first thing you would notice about this problem is that every number here, the 40, the 92, and the 48 are even numbers, right? So we know we could pull something out before we start. We know we could at least pull out a two. Now, if we went through and factored the numbers, we would find that we could factor out a four from this whole thing, right? So the GCF of 40x squared, 92x, and 48 would be a four. And if I went ahead and just pulled that out now, I'd have a 10x squared plus a 23x plus a 12 inside my parentheses. So you always want to pull out stuff that you can, right? If you have something other than one that's the greatest common factor of your terms, pull it out. It's going to save you additional factoring in the end. So now all I want to do is work on this 10x squared plus 23x plus 12. And I'm just going to write a 4 out here. And then I'm going to set up my binomials. Now I'm going to have two different scenarios. Okay, and let me explain why. We have a leading coefficient here of 10, right? 10 is the coefficient for my x squared. 10 is not a prime number. So this is a somewhat more tedious scenario because I can have 10x squared coming from 10x times x, or I can have 10x squared coming from 5x times 2x, okay? Either of these is possible, right? 10x times x is 10x squared. 5x times 2x is also 10x squared. So we just have to go through and kind of slug it out. We think about the fact that all the signs are positive. So I know this is plus, and this is plus, and this is plus, and this is plus. So I just need to figure out these two final terms and see which one of these is going to work out. So if I look at my 12 here, I know 12 has factors of 1 and 12. You could do 2 and 6, and then you could do 3 and 4. So let's go ahead and start with this top one, and let's think about 1 and 12. So if I went ahead and put a 1 here and a 12 here, would that give me the correct middle term of 23x? Well, the outer would be 120x, and the inner would be 1x. So we know that's too large, right? So we can just throw that out. Now, this part right here is important, so you need to pay close attention. Can I put a 12 here and a 1 here? No, it's not possible. So the reason it's not possible is if the original trinomial you're trying to factor does not have a common factor of two in this case, then none of the binomials will have one. And you might say, well, we did have a common factor. We had a common factor of four. But we've already pulled that out. That's outside of the parentheses now. Inside where we have 10x squared plus 23x plus 12, there is no common factor other than one. Okay, so we can't pull anything else out. So this guy is not a possibility because between 10x and 12, I could pull out a two. Right? There's a common factor of 2 there, so this is not a possibility, so you can go ahead and scratch that off the list. So the next thing you would try is 2 and 6, but for the same reason that I just listed, it's not possible. If you put a 2 here, you got a common factor of 2. If you put a 6 here, you've got a common factor of 2. So you can go ahead and cross that off the list. So you really just need to try 3 and 4. You can't put a 4 here because you'd have a common factor of 2. So the only possibility left is a 3 here and a 4 here. So the outer would be 40x, and you know this is going to be too large now because the inner is plus 3x, right? So that would give me 43x, and I'm looking for 23x. So this scenario here where 10x and x are your kind of first terms for each binomial, it's not possible. So you can go ahead and eliminate that, and we're only going to be working with this scenario here now. And let's kind of scooch this up, and I'll go ahead and put equals now. So is it 1 and 12? So I can't put a 12 here, again, for the same reason I have a common factor of 2. So it would have to be a 1 here and a 12 here. Does that work? The outer would be 5x. The inner would be 24x. That's going to be too large. It's 29x. So that doesn't work. So I can go ahead and eliminate 1 and 12. I'll just erase it because I don't have anything else to check with it. So now I'm going to go with 2 and 6, and that's not possible at all. If I put a 2 here, I have a common factor of 2. If I put a 6 here, I have a common factor of 2. So not possible. 
three and four. I can't put a four here, so it has to be true that this is a three and this is a four. No other combination is possible. So if this does not work, we have a prime polynomial. So my outer here would be what? It would be 15x. My inner would be 8x. And it just so happens that 15x plus 8x does give me 23x. So we have correctly factored this guy as 4 times the quantity 5x plus 4 times the quantity 2x plus 3. And of course, you can check this. Forget about the 4 out here. Just go ahead and do FOIL first. So 5x times 2x is going to give me the 10x squared. The outer, again, would be 15x. The inner would be 8x. So 15x plus 8x does give you the 23x in the middle. And then 4 times 3 does give you the 12. So you'd have the 4 outside of parentheses just like you have here. If you multiplied 4 by each term here, you'd get back to the 40x squared plus 92x plus 48. All right, let's take a look at one with two variables involved. And if you've watched the last two review sessions, you know this is no more difficult. So the first thing we should notice here for 45x squared minus 230xy plus 25y squared is we have a common factor of 5, right? This ends in a 5, this ends in a 0, and this ends in a 5. So if I pull out a 5, I would have 9x squared minus 46xy plus 5y squared. And again, now I just want to factor this on the inside. So let's put a 5 out in front. What are the possibilities? I've got a 9x squared. So it's going to be 9x times x, or it's going to be 3x times 3x, right? It's got to be one of those two because 9 is either 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. Okay, that's all there is. So when we think about this second variable, the fact that it's y squared here and a y here means I just have a y here and a y here, okay? There's nothing to worry about when you have a variable involved, like a y squared or a z squared, some second variable that they've thrown in. Just look at where it is. In this position, you have a y squared that can only come from y times y, okay? So just throw it in there and just forget about it. Now we're just looking at the numbers as if it didn't exist. So I also notice that I have a negative middle term and a positive final term. So that tells me these two signs are negative. So now that I've got all that stuff worked out, what are the factors of 5? Well, it's just 1 and 5, right? So if I think about that, I can go through and say, okay, it could be 5 here and 1 here. Does that work out? Well, the outer would be minus 9xy. The inner would be minus 5xy. Does that give me negative 46xy? No, it gives me negative 14xy, so that doesn't work. I can switch the order and put 5 here and 1 here. Now the outer would be negative 45xy. So negative 45xy. And the inner would be minus xy. If we sum these, we do get negative 46xy. So we don't even need to check this. We can get rid of that. So we've correctly factored this. We get 5 times the quantity 9x. You can just go ahead and say minus y times the quantity x minus 5y. 